Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw. We got a packed episode today. We're going to be talking about more on people being upset over this double standard for the director of the board, The Rock. Uh, we're going to talk about how much Bill Goldberg sucks and uh, who, 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 who's going to be at WrestleMania from the Legends roster of WWE, who's booked for Mania. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about more names that could potentially go to Josh Barnett's Bloodsport. I doubt Jay White's going to be one of them, Larson. Although that'd be a hell of a very main surprise. Event. I mean, I, I guess if if Josh wants to bring that all, all full circle, have Josh Barnett versus Switchblade at Bloodsport, right? I think there. that'd be pretty awesome. There's heat there. Have Jr. on commentary. Oh wow! There you go. Wow, close to the action. Have the match uh, get, get out of the ring towards the commentary area. Oh my goodness gracious! We're going to also preview tonight's. SmackDown and answer a bunch of your questions. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. On Monday's show, we talked about those other guys. Dave Meltzer's report that there was frustration within the WWE locker room about an apparent double standard when it comes to Dwayne The Rock Johnson being able to say fuck words, cuss words during his promos on social media and on TV while the rest of the roster was told to chill out, keep it PG. Meltzer initially reported, as one person noted, he does what he wants, and because he's on the board of directors, nobody's going to say anything to him. He also has an entire team of representatives that he surrounds himself with, so any issues, they handle it, while he stays out of the mess with the people he directly deals with. But one person noted that there was a feeling that the era of Vince McMahon's double standards for his hand-picked stars and for everyone else uh, was over under Paul Levesque. But now Johnson has shown that it's exactly the same. In the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer added this. The talent was told that because the company was publicly traded and the wishes of TKO management was to be TVPG. The feeling was that if he's on the board of anything, he should be the one following the rules to set the example. Some also complained that they can get more traction on television promos and in social media if they had those handcuffs taken off them. And the handcuffs in this case are only off for Johnson. And even people like Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes have had to adhere to the policy, although Rhodes was allowed a lot more leeway in his comeback promo on Raw. Larson, what do you say about all this? The, the, I know he mentions this memo that went out. Now, apparently there's a, a, a directive where no one could say ass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we count at least three, if not four instances, just on Raw this past week, on Monday, where someone said ass. Yeah. Pat McAfee said it. Jey Uso said it. Uh, Cody called Dwayne an asshole. An asshole. He said, Cody said dick. He said dick. I'm, yeah. <sighs> this feels like one of those things where they're trying to push this idea that Rock is above company protocol because he's, he's, he's you know, taking the power, his newfound power, and exploiting it and, and pushing it out in various ways, including how, how Rock is able to cuss as much as he wants during these promos, and apparently no one else can, even though every episode of WTV, I can point probably to th uh, late three or four instances where someone other than Dwayne is cussed. So what are you like saying? There's, 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 there's not a whole lot of consistency here with the argument when there's so many examples other than Dwayne of people not following this protocol. So put it together. What does that mean? I just told you what it means. This is, this is, this is, they're putting stuff out there to work the, the dirt sheets. They're, they're spotting the marks. That's right. Yeah. Come on. They keep doing this. This is like an ongoing thing. They're just, they're just putting stuff out there and, and, and we're supposed to just eat it all up. This is fake. This is fake. Fake. It's fake. Let's go back to the, the kayfabe corner days, Steve. Real. Right. Fake. Fake. Yeah, man. Look, nobody cares about this. Nobody, nobody's, nobody, nobody. Look, man, you and I are a couple of nerds, but yeah. it takes a real dork to say he should be setting the example. He's the board of director. I know. Get out of here with that. Nobody's saying that. 
Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that. Everybody would champ at the bit. Champ at the bit, I tell you, Larson, to work yeah. with The Rock. Oh, yeah. And that, look, I'm not even saying that as like Rock's number one fan, even though I am. Yeah, you are now. I'm saying that. By the way, speaking of The Rock, I was uh, a guest on Greg Morgan's Good Mike Commentaries podcast today uh, on the YouTube uh, where we ranked Rock's WrestleMania matches. Getting back to it, though, go check as it out. Rock's new number plug, one. You plug thing. it. Now you have to encourage people to go watch it. Go check it out. Oh, I figured that'd be, you know, the subtext. I know, but why? Yeah, why keep it subtext when you the, can make it the text? Go this watch is a it. wrestling podcast. Subtlety is not our thing. Um, yeah, dude. I'll, I'll, yeah. You know, bringing it down a notch here. Um, I, yeah, this just feels like it's much ado about nothing. It, it nothing really here. is. There's yeah. nothing here. It, it does make me here. laugh. Like, you know, and, hey, you know, teach their own. Feel free to comment as much as, as as much as you want, guys. We can agree to disagree on stuff. But it, it did crack me last time we talked about this. How many people were like, "Hey, you guys slurping at the rock? There shouldn't there shouldn't be a double standard." Man, nobody cares. Nobody cares. This isn't Walmart, okay? This isn't like, oh, Jesse over there, he gets to stock half the stuff that I have to stock. What's that? This isn't that, okay? No. That you might have a good point with Jesse stocking half the shit. Well, even in the, in the case of WB, you could probably account to, you know, when Vince was running things, a thousand instances of double standards that are far more impactful in terms of backstage morale uh, than this is. This ain't that. No. Th- this, is, this is not that. This is not no. that. No. And so, yeah, uh, this is, this feels, if there's anything, it feels small, and I really mm-hmm. doubt it's anything. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. Cody was able to. I mean, it was clear Cody was going out of his way to do as much as they could um, yeah. under like, you know, the, what, what they're allowed to do. But of course, Cody's a full time guy. He's about to be the guy. Yeah. Um, but the the rock is the rock, you know. Um, I mean, so, we were very clear. So, yeah. We talked about Monday is like we explained why if if there is a double standard, why it exists. Yeah, we understood that in a, a perfect world, that wouldn't be the case, assuming this is an actual thing, which probably isn't. Yeah. But understanding how corporate culture, the corporate world works, we understood why The Rock, if there is a double standard, he would have it while, while, while others weren't. Yeah. Wouldn't, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bunch of silliness, but uh, you know what? Uh, hopefully... You know, today's Friday. I mean, well, it is Friday, not hopefully. It's it is Friday. Actually Friday. Get excited. Mm-mm. Nope, don't do that. Uh, what? what? What am I? What are you, eight years old? Who says Friday? Come on, get out of here with that. Get hype. It's basketball. We're playing basketball today. You know, man, you've got the, 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 the look of like an esteemed Ivy League professor, and you're going oh. around saying things like Friday. Come on now. Yeah. Your mystique is falling apart, Lars. I got no mystique, pal. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you Look know at us in our matching shirts. Where's the mystique? What a bunch of dorks. I know. Hey. Dorks. I got the dork mystique. I'll tell you that. Hey, on this Friday, you want to talk about who's a real dork? That's Bill, Bill Goldberg. Goldberg. <laughs> That's Bill Goldberg. <laughs> so during an appearance on Nothing Left Unsaid, Goldberg was asked if there was any ill will directed towards him while in WWE because of coming from WCW. He said there was because he didn't get along with Triple H. Didn't Triple H put him over? Okay. And he added this. And I watched this clip, Larson. Same. And the level, the level of entitled old white dude who Off really thinks of himself as a modern day Bruno San Martino. No one's no one's more of a fan than Bill Goldberg than Bill Goldberg. Yeah. He said this. Uh, uh that happened after I got there. Oh, sorry, and- transcripts are from Fightful. Oh, Sorry. thank you, Fightful. That happened after I got there. A girl beat my undefeated streak. I can't even remember. Asuka is her name. Some Japanese girl. They touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. It just so happened that it culminated when I got there. Then it just so happened that every single wrestler uses the spear in their moves. Pretty ironic that happened when I got there. And he's got this look on his face that you just want to fucking slap because this this old man, let me talk to your manager bullshit 
that Bill Goldberg brings to the to, to the table. You know, this fucker comes in, and not only does he ruin the mystique of the fiend yep. by reportedly, and I know he's denied this, but reportedly saying, no, I don't want a job to this monster because what would it say to my children and, and all the kids out I there who that care about 60-year-olds? I think that superheroes actually exist. Right. This guy who, oh, let me, I have a list here of uh, all of Bill Goldberg's best matches. Oh, that's right. It's empty because he doesn't have any because he was dog shit in the ring. Yep. He made he made Matt Riddle look like a genius. I'm not your bro. Matt Riddle probably could have brought him to a decent match, by the way. Maybe. Which he never had. The, only, the, the highlight of Bill Goldberg's in-ring career was getting schooled by William Goldberg, um, by, by William Regal. Yeah. William Goldberg. That'd be yeah. weird. In WCW. <laughs> Raw yeah. technology yeah. there. Look, yeah. there's Goldberg fans out there. That's great. You know, fill up our comments with, uh, you know, whatever you want to say. But, you know, trying to uh, trying to diminish the uh, the accomplishments, which are all scripted and predetermined, by the way. Exactly. By a they guy, are, a thousand percent. By a guy who, by the way, bent over backwards to make something out of Bill Goldberg when he showed up in WWE Triple H, um, and by a company, mind you, that brought him back at the age of like fifty thousand in yep. twenty fifteen, yep. stripped a really, really good story between Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho of the Universal Championship prize there, just to have this asinine series with with Brock Lesnar. Um, and paid him millions in the process. He's going to whine about his fake-ass streak. Half of, I know. I think more than half of those matches, by the way, didn't even happen. Yep. Yep. And yep. he's going to whine and, 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 and use a term like some Japanese girl? It's so, it's okay, so disrespectful. Bill. It's so fucking disrespectful. It is. It's so Fuck incredibly disrespectful. Yeah, this is... This is we this knew is, he sucked in 98, and he sucks now. He does. He does. Oscar's a thousand times the wrestler Bill Goldberg ever was. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oscar's legitimately one of the best wrestlers in the entire world. Absolutely. A thousand percent. And to throw that any level of disrespect to her. It's uncalled for. It's fucking uncalled for. It's it a is. predetermined scripted streak. It's yeah. a storytelling device. He didn't Bill, do you think you actually went out there and won those matches? Right. Due to your skill level? No. Yeah. Someone yeah. before you went out there said Goldberg up and you won. Yeah. You know, hey, we've got this. We've got this guy that looks like he was, you know, formed through rockade technology out of like pure muscle and 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 you know, whatever, and intensity and intensity. Yeah, thank but you. But bereft of actual any character, that's why they had to do. That's why they had to get rid of the streak in WCW. Because where were you going to go with that guy? Yeah, where yeah. were you going to go with him? He had no character whatsoever. No. You couldn't do anything with him. His character was headbutting doors, dude. If I ever. If I ever get so old and and desperate for relevancy that I start trashing like the 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 younger generation, my God, just take me out to the fucking woodshed, dude. Not literally. Please don't actually do that. No, no. you mean in terms of of you doing this for a career? Just you know, just you know, do the just grab him by the lapels. What are you doing? <laughs> another thing another thing that's weird about this is he's conflating seemingly two times he was in WWE. Yeah, he is. Yeah. You know, he he's talking it, 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 as if time is a flat circle and his run from what 2002 to 2003 happened at the same time as the second run from 2016 to, you know, afterwards. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um cuz the when when Gold I think it was 2016 when Goldberg came back Mm -hmm. as a wrestler to WWE. I think it was Survivor Series 2015, wasn't it? Is that what Something it was? Something like that. Something okay, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Asuka was still in NXT. Yeah. She wasn't uh, didn't get called to the main roster until the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, which by that point, he had finished his series with, with Brock. And it's like he, he's portraying all this stuff as if it's an intentional slight towards him. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not. Yeah. I, I, I highly doubt it was Goldberg was on anybody's mind when they were booking Asuka to be dominant in NXT and have a, a, a undefeated streak of over 900 days. And she tweeted out at the time, respect for Bill Goldberg, and he reciprocated that. But you know, deep down, evidently, evidently resentment. deep down, oh, I can't believe him. they did this to me. After all my yeah. contributions, after all those spears and half-hearted jack, uh, jackhammers. I know. 
I know. You know, that basically nowadays, or last time we saw Jack Hammer, it just looked like a standard suplex. Yeah. We're supposed to believe that as a moment. Well, when he, when he didn't drop somebody, Undertaker, on their head. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's like he, he's framing everything, all of his accomplishments, everything that he feels like he brought to the world wrestling. Now that anybody else has bested those accomplishments or, accomplishments or used those moves, it was intentionally done uh, as a slight to him. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's no evidence for that. No, none. none. Oh, oh, everybody's using my spear. Guess what? People use the pedigree. They kick out of that shit. People use. People have been using the super kick. Sweet Shin music for how long? You don't hear Shawn Michaels bitching about that. People have been using DDTs for 30 years. Right. As just a common move. People are starting to use the, the, the RKO slash diamond cutter as a common move. Destroyers. Destroyers. Pile Power drivers. Bombs. Choke slams. That's the history of wrestling is that someone has a move as a finisher. It becomes commonplace. It's just another move in the arsenal. Yeah. That's wrestling, Bill. And you can even, dude, you can even apply some amount. I think Jordan Grace tweeted this out recently, but you and I had had, uh, had talked about this before, about how, you know what? When Raven dropped somebody with the even flow DDT, he just had his own way of doing it. That made yeah. it a finisher. Yeah. When Bill Goldberg... Number one, it was always a spear slash jackhammer. Yeah, I don't, he didn't win a ton with just a spear, if I'm not mistaken. I doubt it, no, no. Um, but it's like you know, okay, it's 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 fantasy land, dude. Exactly. When you did the spear jackhammer, you did it, you know, with your own twist that made it a finisher. When Shawn Michaels hit people with sweet chin music, he had his own torque to it that made it a finisher. You can write this stuff. It's fantasy. It's exactly. fiction. Didn't exactly. happen. Exactly. Every boxer probably out there ha employs an uppercut. Yeah, right. Some people's uppercuts are just stronger than others. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, 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 the stuff happens in the world of sports. Yeah. Every baseball player picks up a bat and swings it. Mm -hmm. Some hit a lot of home runs, some don't. Yeah. They could be the same size. You know, they could be this, this, the same weight, same musculature. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're going to have the same stats. Don't come for Oscar, dude. Don't no. disrespect Oscar's name. No, don't do that. Like no. they're like, yeah, they're, you don't, they don't do that. You don't no. do that, especially, no. especially with that garbage in ring that he's got. I know, I know, I know. No. And on top of that, you retired Bret Hart. How many? How many? How many? How many? Like another decade of Bret Hart matches that we could have got. You know, Bill talks about in the same interview. He talks yeah, about how Bret still. I can only say sorry so many times. I love that, that haunts him though. Because every time he does an interview, people talk about that shit. I know. I know. Anyways, let's talk about happier things. While it seems unlikely that Bill Goldberg will be making an appearance at WrestleMania, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, those other guys. Other guys. A trio of former WWE champions are penciled in for appearances in Philadelphia saying this. Nothing is official, but the belief right now is that Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, hell yeah. I'm being Philadelphia. I was an ECW. Also, The Undertaker. Dead man walk in. I'm the most extreme. Uh, and, uh, of course, the deathmatch king himself, John Cena, do, 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 will do. have something at WrestleMania in some form. At press time, there is no creative locked in for Cena and Austin at this moment. Or if there is, it's a well-guarded secret. A lot depends on how much they're willing to do and money. Cena is free, but depending on what acting stuff he has and how quick he's after filming, I'm sorry, and how quick after he's filming would determine how much he can or cannot do for insurance reasons. Austin and Undertaker would be based on willingness that they have. So, uh, yeah, man. What, what would you like to see Austin and Undertaker do? Recreate their epic SummerSlam 1998? Eight, the one where Stone Cold gets cussed really... Or foe. Where Stone Cold gets concussed really early into it and, and seems pretty out of it for a vast duration of that match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing major, though, because I want the focus to be on the talent stories they're telling now. I get it. It's WrestleMania. It's when the company has the largest spotlight of the year on them. They want to bring in as many well-known names to amplify that spotlight. That being said, don't take precious WrestleMania time away from the talents who are there on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, putting their bodies on the line, wrestling, and, and don't sacrifice time telling the stories you've invested time in telling throughout the last few months, year or so, just to shoehorn an appearance from Stone Cold or The Undertaker in. 
Have them there. The fact that they're there is enough that people will pay attention. They don't have to be involved in anything. Oh, come on, man. Like, I don't want Stone Cold running out at the end of night two for the main event. It's going to be just, it's going to go from overbooked to absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. That's how I like my wrestling, Larson. They may barely, like, on the verge of not making any sense. (laughs) No, come on, man. They'll do, like, a fun, you know, uh, intro, in-ring thing where they're all having fun. People love that shit. Yeah, that's fine if they want to come out and introduce 40 years of WrestleMania. Say what you will about, say what you will. I'm surprised surprised Hogan isn't listed here. Um, Say what you will about uh, the the Hulkamaniac, Larson. That bit with him, Austin, and Rock that one year, that was fucking good. That was was because Hogan forgot where they were. I know, and it was funny. And you know what? That's the kind of stuff that can happen uh, when you get all these super old guys in the ring together. Not Bill Goldberg. He's not fun. No, he's not. <laughs> oh, man, how many, hey, how many, what's the over-under on number of comments we're going to get? Oh, you guys, why are you guys spitting on Bill Goldberg's name? He's a turd, that's why. Yeah, oh, right. how many comments? Yeah. I don't know, like, how many comments do you usually get for a video? 60, 70, something like that? Yeah, something like this. Know. Yeah. Maybe 100? A hundred. How many? Uh, specific, yeah. I want uh, like, what's going to be the most? Cause like last time when we uh, were talking shit about, no, we were saying like the rock or whatever. Somebody's like, I can't believe you guys are defending the rock. It was like upvoted uh, quite a few times. Oh, it was like 30, know. 30 thumbs up on one. I was going to say somewhere in the thirties, there might be a comment where someone's like, Oh no, Bill's a legend in, in his, yeah. earned his legacy. You guys aren't like shit. That. Yeah. And you guys don't know <laughs> shit. Which, for a variety of other reasons, you could say we don't know shit, and I'd be like, fine, that's cool. Yeah, right, yeah. But in, in this instance where Goldberg's disrespecting Oscar, there's no place for, for that. Yeah, he shouldn't right. be doing that yeah, at all. You're, you're kind of outing yourself as a turd lover if you, if you come to the defense of Bill Goldberg. In this instance, uh, yes. Uh, this should be fun, though. We're about a week removed from the announcement. Actually, you know what? Screw this. Uh, hold on. Just wait, Josh Barnett. Just wait. We're going to talk about us for a second. <laughs> Steven Larson, Bloodsport. <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be the worst blood sport ever, dude. I'm booking Steve versus Larson. Oh. You want two two guys in their mid forties getting gassed within forty seconds of a match? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no, we'll we'll take our blood sport to the basketball court later on today. There we and go. We got to we got to start doing that shit where they're playing basketball and suplexing each other. <laughs> Remember that? Did I send you? Oh no, yeah, no, I've seen that. Yeah, that was amazing. That was great. It's amazing. Yeah. We again won't last forty seconds doing that. It'd be a that terrible shit, idea. Man. Um, but no, uh, we are here to talk about uh, a couple things. Number one, I'll speed run this because y'all know the deal. We're talking about the Frendo Club setup today, Larson early. That means you guys actually got two this week. A new Frendo cast went up this morning. Our mm. bonus episode usually mm. drops on Monday. Nah, nah, we're getting an early start. I put it up today on Friday. Uh, we talk about a wide variety of stuff. We start off uh, looking at Uber facts and riffing on them. And then we have like an extended conversation about AI and illustration and the, and the sad state of that. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about that today on Frendo cast. That's available now. It's exclusive to the Frendo Club setup. And the way you get the Frendo Club setup is... One of two ways. You can click join right here at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson, or you can go to uh, patreon.com slash Stephen Larson and click on the Friendo Club setup tier. Either way, it's $5 a month. It's a great way to help support going in raw. And uh, uh, yeah, you get the whole backlog of bonus episodes that we've done. You also got access to the question threads that we put up for every episode. And on top of that, access to the Big Blue Predictions Challenge. We have a huge predictions challenge happening at the upcoming WrestleMania 40. So if you want to get involved in that and show that you are, that your prediction skills are superior, uh, get in on that. It's a Frendo Club setup. Uh, Like I said, great way to help support the cause here going in raw. So you can check that out also. Uh, if it's not too much trouble, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and the little notify bell, and that you're good. That's that's a free and easy way to help support Going and Raw. We'd really appreciate that, too. If you're listening in the audio realm, comment, review, or rating. That all helps as well. We appreciate yes. every every little bit, you know? We do. There, there was, there was a, one of the, I guess, the dude who was running, like, uh, Rooster Teeth or whatever. There was this clip on, on the Twitter uh, they're mm-hmm. going around during one of their last streams, I guess. And he was like, you know, viewing doesn't do anything. You need to be supporting these people with your patronage money. was the word he used. Yeah. Give them your patronage. And it's like, you know what? I, I we obviously incredibly appreciate the people who go the extra mile and put in on the Patreon for the Friendo Club setup. But seriously, if you're watching, if you're a fan of wrestling and you're just watching, Thank you. We appreciate yes. that as yes. well. That is very yes. important. And just sharing sharing the love 
if you have other wrestling fans in your life, letting them know about going and raw, that helps too. And it's free it and it's easy. And, yeah. uh, and we appreciate all the friendos out there watching regardless if you're putting in money or not, Hey, that going the extra mile, you're in my heart. You really are. Absolutely. But even but those it just wa- who might not have it, who might not have it, you know, watching the show. That's, it that's, does. that's, that's, that's good. That's, yeah. that's good too. All right, let's talk about this. So we're about a week removed. It was last week from the announcement that Shayna Baszler, yes, WWE Shayna Baszler, yeah. was going to appear at Josh Barnett's Bloodsport show this year. That's a GCW thing. It is. Not WWE. So while speaking with Under the Ring, Josh Barnett himself talked about other names he'd be interested in bringing in. These transcripts come to you from Fifle. This is what Josh had to say. And no, Jay White is not on this list. Bummer. Josh said, quote, if given the chance to bring in Sorry, bring other guys in, of course. I've spoken with Malachi Black a few times about coming into Bloodsport. I've spoken to CM Punk. It'd be great to have Chad Gable or Braun Breaker or any number of people with amateur backgrounds. Charlie Dempsey is out there show, showing catch his catch can. He spent the time abroad training for quite some time, and I've worked with him over distance for some years prior, just sending videos, going to techniques, and having conversations. The kid is doing all his own work because he really wants to be the type of wrestler that you think he is. It's important to him. I could see it. There's a whole wealth of talent out there that could be great. Miro from AEW. Maybe someone like him would be a good fit. There's plenty of talent. At the end of the day, it's not just what I want or who I could get. Bill Goldberg is like family to me. Maybe he'll want to get into blood sport. Who knows? Whoever it is, they have to see this ring for what it is and what we've created and say that's something I've got to do. That's me. I want to show myself and shine myself in a place like this. When you put those two things together, who knows what could happen? You know, man, Barnett's got to be really proud of what he's created there with Bloodsport. It's mm-hmm. a it's something that's highly anticipated by a lot of people every year that they do it. Our dude Cal Jack yep. was in one year. I'd love to see yep. Cal Jack get back in there. Could oh, you imagine yeah. him mixing up with like a Charlie Dempsey or a Chad Gable? That'd be super you know, cool. Something like that. That'd be awesome. That'd be super cool. I don't know about having, you know, given how CM Punk's MMA career will go, when I don't know if I, I could really take him seriously in the blood sport realm. I mean, you know, I feel I feel you, but I think it'd be kind of, I think it'd be fun. Come on. That'd be I mean, fun. it'd be a good draw for blood sport. It'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be, be like, good. Am I supposed to, exp- I saw him get pummeled in UFC. I expect Man, him to. Come on. Just, I mean, look, I know a couple of these. I know a couple of these dudes are legit. Was Chad Gable uh, more than collegiate? Was he Olympic? Yeah, he was a, a, a Olympic alternate, I think. Okay, all right, all right. That's legit. That's good stuff. Like Cal right Jack there. was an All American wrestler. Oh, Cal Jack's legit. Cal yeah. Jack's legit. Yeah, he, that dude should be blowing up, man. Like Malachi's um, got a lot of experience in kickboxing. But like Charlie Dempsey. You know, as far as I know, well, he, Malachi, I don't, I don't, he's, I don't like, know about he, his amateur wrestling background. I don't know. Like Malachi, like trains in kickboxing. Yeah, it has for a long time. Yeah, but CM Punk trains in, you know, he trains in. I know, but he has been, I don't think he's been doing as long as Malachi has with kickboxing. Man, they threw CM, CM Punk dove into the deep end, dude. Like UFC, even even the shittiest in the UFC, they're oh, like. Oh, it's better than the, way better than any regional fighter. I understand that. I would think so. He really should have started out on the regionals, you know. He should have. But, uh, but, you know, who's going to turn that down? If, they, if DC Comics came to me and was like, hey, Steve, you haven't done a comic book in 20 years. You want you want to crack a Batman? I'm not going to say no. Everybody's going to be like, "Oh, this is terrible," but I'm not going to say no to that. Oh, of course, you would say no. no absolutely not. <laughs> but the fantasy land of uh, you know the 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 worked shoot fight or whatever it is, um, yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down. I I get your point. Don't get me wrong. I get your point. I see the guy just run straight and flush into a punch. <laughs> yeah, and, and but, instantly gets taken down. I know. Yeah, but you know what? He had a good time in there. Um, I don't know that first fight afterwards. It didn't seem like he was having that much fun. Man, look, dude. I'm just gonna say this. I- I'm cool with CM Punk. I'm cool because I'm number. One, I'm CM Punk number one fan. You know that. You uh, have been for many years. Absolutely. Uh, Chad Gable would be great. Braun Breaker, sure. Why not? Charlie Dempsey would be outstanding. How about this? Charlie Dempsey versus Pops versus William Regal. That'd be good. Oh my! I don't think I don't think I don't think William Regal could wrestle anymore though. Oh, he's got a bad neck. Never say never, Sonny Jim. Uh, the only name on here on, I don't, you know, if he's, if he's family, cool. Keep it to Thanksgiving. I don't want to see Bill Goldberg in blood sport. Today's Same. fuck Bill Goldberg day. You know, we're taking it a is. break from fuck Hulk Hogan day. We're no, we, we can Goldberg celebrate day. both concurrently, Steve. Holidays can't f- fall on the same day. It's illegal. That's not the case. It's not yeah. true. Yeah. Like, have you noticed like no holidays fall on anybody's birthday? Have you noticed that? That's completely untrue. I'm sure your very own birthday has fallen on a holiday before. My birthday's like on December 27th, 25th. No, 
There's one in the uh, maybe Labor Day. Dude, that's identity theft, Larson. What are you doing right now? <laughs> Every time we do a show on each other's birthday, what is the first thing we say? Know, we're putting our shit out on Twitter. It's such a bad idea. It really is. <laughs> What's next? Our home address. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, hey, happy birthday. What's the last four of your social? I know. I know. I know. Oh, man. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So that's cool, man. I'm down. I'm down with all of it except for Bill Goldberg because yeah. today is, of course, fuck Bill Goldberg Day. And it's uh, and it's it's a testament that on fuck Bill Goldberg Day, we got a smackdown, Larson. And with that, we got a smackdown preview. Number one. Oh, boy. Here we go. Let's go. Roman Reigns, face-to-face, -face, Cody Rhodes, mano e mano, no bloodline, no Cody Avengers, none, nobody else. No Rock, out there. apparently. No, no rock. rock. But Rock should be so dropping a social media promo, man. You would think so. It ain't. Or he's going to talk now. about his unleaded this time. There we go. Uh, Rey Mysterio looks for payback against Santos Escobar. I'd expect this match to not have a, a, a finish, and it's going to be booked for WrestleMania. You didn't throw me the Santos Escobar. Sorry. Rey Mysterio looks for payback against Santos Escobar. Sorry. Oh, we got the OC on SmackDown. They're not Yuck. just an NXT. Battle Grayson Waller and Austin Theory for a chance at undisputed WWE tag team titles. So they're throwing Grayson and Wa uh, Grayson and Waller, Grayson and uh, Waller and Austin Theory. I can't get it right. Uh, the OC. All right, there you go. Yeah. Feeding. Who are the OC feuding with in NXT? <laughs> Isn't it Braun and and, the and fuck Baron are you for the tag titles? Me I, think for, I think they're feuding I with the know. with the. I did see like a Baron social media post the other day of the Wolf Dogs with uh, their uh, they had like matching Adidas uh, uh, oh, track like sweat suits. Sweat, Dude, sweat we need to, we need to get some Friendo Club track jackets and know, and, and matching pants. Yeah, damn it, that'd be cool. That'd Next be time really if cool. we do like one of them wrestling conventions, that's what we're rolling. We're every day we're rolling on one of those. That's a good idea. Yeah, great man. idea. Yeah, uh, Street Profits battle AOP chance for WrestleMania. Ooh, this should be Street Profits, but I don't know who wins this, dude. I know. It should be Street Profits. Yeah. It should be the Street Profits. I want to see be. Tez uh, do some crazy shit there at uh, WrestleMania. At, uh, uh, in ladder match, yes. I do, too. I do, too. All right. We got that out of the way. You're ready to answer questions. Oh, man. I am ready, willing, and Locked gable. and loaded. View channel. Uh, King Pertov here says, am I only a person who thought Triple H would be more involved during this bloodline versus Cody Seth feud mm. based on how involved he was at the beginning? Yeah, no, you're not was... the only one. I thought there was a good chance that the game uh, would be pushing back against any effort The Rock has about, you know, utilizing his newfound power. I was hoping that'd be the case. I was hoping that'd be the case. And there was allusions to that when Triple H showed up after the uh, press conference to open that SmackDown whatever. I wonder if they. I wonder if like in the end they were they had some ideas and were like you know what we don't want this to be number one the focus to be Rock versus Triple H so yeah. as to not give people the impression given that certain people out there mistook a ten year old video clip for something that happened at the press conference they're like yeah we don't want like we don't want to give people the wrong idea I wonder or or they're like we don't want people to think that like or this feud. This feud can't end up being like an ep as much as you and I would probably like it, but it risks becoming like an episode of Succession. One of the meteor episodes when they're like talking about, you know, uh, stockholders and shit like that, you know, yeah, like yeah. where you're starting to lose it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if we want a lot of vignettes at, you know, whatever Titan Towers is right now. You got that right. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, Beans says, what would be your ideal length of matches? Um, just period or, or or for like a WrestleMania or a pay-per-view? He says, personally, I'd go 10 to 15 minutes, but I'm interested to hear your pins. I'll be honest. I do not have an ideal length of a match. Um, I think that there are matches out there that could be trimmed down. Like back when Collision was doing those 25-minute multi-man matches. Remember when they did an hour of FTR versus Bullet Club Gold? It was really yeah. good. Yeah, it was, it was really good, good stuff. That's a little bit much. At the same time, there are some matches where I'm like, man, they could have given this a lot more time. So it, it depends on the match. It depends on the participants. It depends on the story being told. There's a lot. Yeah. Of, there's a lot to go into that. I feel like for your your average <clears throat> episode of wrestling TV, an average, I mean, some longer, some shorter match length of about twelve minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, yeah, depending on the participants, the story, the type of match. 
what story you're trying to tell, what story beats you're trying to hit. All that will dic dictate the exact length of match. But I feel like more or less if every match on average gets 12 minutes. So I think that's a good number. Oh, wow. What? Uh, the mystery of, uh, of Princess Kate has been solved. Oh. Uh, turns out she's got cancer and she's mm -hmm. been doing chemo. So I'm sure all the speculation surrounding affairs and babies and whatnot probably helped her quite a bit. You know, they could have been like a bit more transparent about, I mean, I know, look, I understand it's her personal life, yeah. but it's a very unique situation. And I would have thought to like sort of cut all that nasty speculation off. They could have just been like, look, this is a situation. It's a real life. It's real life nastiness. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a shame. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, yeah, hopefully that, that they're is. able to, to, to get that figured out. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. I hope so. Wow. Uh, Payday here says with the Slammy Awards returning, what would you do to improve it from last time? I don't think I've ever watched the Slammy Award presentation. Neither have I. Neither have I. Just do them quickly. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. The one thing at one time I did like the how they handled the Slammies is when Shawn Michaels won one, they used that to further his feud with uh, The Undertaker. I think, yeah, I think Shawn cool. Michaels lost match. That was really well done. I mean, a couple of them gave him some good gifts from like the 97 Slammies. Yeah, you know, yeah, With yeah, The yeah. Rock, you know. Stone Cold. Stone Cold, yeah, just stone-faced, yeah. Uh, Elemental Giant, what matches should open nights one and two of Mania? Uh, Seth and Drew should open night two. Open night one. Uh, have the tag team match open night one. The ladder match. That would be a killer one. Yeah. Usually you need like a turd match. What what did Cena and Theory open night one, one or two? I think it was one. Yeah. And I think the year before that there was another turd match that opened night one. So you, you start each night out with like a really good match. And then if you're going to have the turd match, have it after that. Right. But what would be, what would be uh, the turd match this year? Gosh, I don't know if there's going to be a turd match this year. It might not have been announced yet. They still have to. If, if it's entirely oh. possible, if they're doing seven a day, like hey, if uh, they try to do Karrion Cross and Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania, that's that probably be their, that first match was not very good. Some dudes just don't have chemistry. I'm not dogging either of those guys. I'm certainly not dogging Bobby Lashley. That guy's amazing. He brought yeah. Bill Goldberg to a decent match. Yeah, he did. Poor Bobby Lashley. He's there slumming it with Bill Goldberg. Uh, Alex Foster says Steve has turned on Cody and cost him the title at Mania. Cool. Right on. Put your ones up, Steve. Uh, Cody asked for an explanation. What does Steve tell him? What's your explanation to Cody? I'll, I'll, I'll address your explanation with a message to The Rock. Good. I got you, buddy. I'm number one. <laughs> uh, Ty Moore here says. No, you know, what, I, you know what? what I'd say? I'd be like this. I'd be like, Cody, I'll give you a reason. Because your favorite Star Trek show, I think, I think he said it's like Voyager. Ooh. Yeah. How's it not Deep Space Nine? That's a slap in the face to Steve. It is. It slap is. Slap in the face. I don't know how he feels about Enterprise. I'll have to ask him how he feels about Enterprise. What if, if he, he gives it, it any praise, any praise, sticking, I'm swerving him. Wow. Enterprise wow. is dog shit. Never seen it. Time War here says, W and AW adapting more sports-like presentation to their shows. What other sports-like presentations would you like to see added? What if they well, started having the commentary team up in the booth? Oh, okay, yeah, that'd be good. That would be pretty neat. Yeah, I don't know. And then during like the show, the they, they, they cut and there's a commentary team in the booth. And then, you know, down below, they got the, the ring and all that. Mm -hmm. That'd be a pretty cool visual. It'd be a cool visual, I guess. Um, other sports presentation, uh, do sort of like, um, cheesy Sunday night, you know, like NBC used to have that cheesy Sunday night football, like opening uh, They still have the same video. song. Yeah. It's the same Waiting song all day for a Sunday. They're night. still yeah. doing that. I think it's still Carrie Underwood doing it too. Oh, wow. I could be wrong, but it's the same song. There were a couple of years where the the like the the graphics they would do like the overly green screened. Oh, it was so bad. So bad. Yeah, it was the cringiest shit. 
and then Raw and SmackDown, AEW, I, you know, they got these these modern sounding musical tracks. Nah, give me something like uh, Round Ball Rock. Dude, you're right. Hey, I got another one too. Uh, if Chad Gable hits 15 suplexes, you guys get a free crumble cookie. Yes. Yes. Or tacos. Yeah. Yes. Giveaways. <laughs> and they always do 14 because it's They scripted. always do 14. <laughs> Heat on Chad Gable. Heat on Chad Gable. <laughs> Dave Matusha. You remember, remember the days when if the, the Kings won so infrequently that, that the giveaways, if they, I think, crossed 100 points? Yeah, that right. That was the yeah. giveaway. You go to Carl's Jr. and get free fries or something yeah, like that. You, yeah, you get a whole like burger or something like that. Yeah. yeah it's kind of awesome. Cause, but it never happened. No. <laughs> Uh, Dave Matusha, considering that four wrestlers are doing an exodus at stardom, immediately I have no idea what this question's about. Do you think this setback for the company could affect any plans for Forbidden Door this year? No, I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, know it how many. Seems like it seems like Tony Khan's already had the conversations about that. If if the rumors would be believed that stardom's going to be involved, then I would assure there's, I would guess there's already been some preparation for for that. Yeah. I mean, I we're mean, not getting dude, Julia there or, or any of the other women who are are, are leaving. How shortly. many like how many women's matches do we expect to be at Forbidden Door? Anyways, it's Tony probably one we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. AW probably one. You know. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a good one, John. John, John and Alistair voice says, "What would you rather have? Triple H, Triple H's lats." And I'm saying back from 2000, yeah. whenever he came. I like put my arms down. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Champ, I oh, I think this is the winner for you. Well, okay. Champa's vascularity. All right. Uh, or Finn's or Johnny Gargano's abs. Oh, it's Finn's abs. It's the Finn's abs. It's they the, are yeah, something it's else. The Balor abs. Yeah. They are something else. Yeah. I'm trying to get there. I'm yeah. trying. I'm, I'm I'm dedicating more time to working my my core. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I've had my first abdominal muscle kind of poke through a little bit. Oh, there you go. You're getting right there. here. I, I look like in the it. mirror and I see it a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. I've even like eaten better and stuff because like you know. Yeah. Yeah. I I see, don't really drink much thing, anymore. Yeah. I just you know I gotta enjoy life a little bit. Uh, Samuel Raja. What match would you rather see? I'm sorry. What match do you see Dom having at Mania? That is a good question because right now it seems like there's nothing for him. True. Yeah. Because he's not getting involved in the Santo stuff with no. Ray, so it's not going to be that. Because right now there's 10 matches. So we'll add the four. idea is, is they'll add four more. Santos and Ray will probably be one of those. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, is Dom even really involved in a feud these days? Nope. I my only suggestion was Dom and JD getting the tag match, but yeah. I, there's I mean that's that there's no there's no there's right now a written way to happening. do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, let's see if I got anything else here. I think we kind of oh, uh, Blake Whitehouse here says with Miles Bourne being WWE's first deaf wrestler. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Wow. Uh, do you see that being a barrier that prevents him from being a top star? No. No, not at all. No. Not at all. Not at all. No. Nope. Um, Primetime Rambo says, at this point, do we even want to see Adam Cole versus MJF? Isn't it crazy just how much AEW has changed in the short amount of time since we had MJF and Adam Cole in a I know. or doing I know. their thing? It seems like a completely different company now. It really does. In such does. a short amount of time. It really does, yeah. Within the span of like four weeks, yeah. <laughs> they completely like reformatted yeah. what they do. Yeah. I know. And it seems yeah. like there was, a, not only did they completely reformat, it seems like for a small stretch, we're just going to be the wrestling show. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because it was so focused on like post-Continental Classic, we're going to focus on in-ring action. There was hardly any talking. Mm -hmm. And then in like the last three weeks, they're like, we're going to keep the wrestling, but we're going to add a few more talky bits in, but they're going to be really primarily directed towards advancing story rather than just having someone on the ring talking for some reason. Right, yeah. Because that was what kind of the thing is, is, Unless, like, for example, the MJF CM Punk feud where there was a lot of really long protracted promos, but it was good stuff and it helped build the feud. You'd have Chris Jericho out there talking for 10 minutes, not really saying a hell of any, a whole lot of yeah. anything. Yeah. And that happened far too often. They've gotten rid of that. Yeah. And every, every promo or interview now seems to have a very distinct purpose. 
Yeah. But if you think of back of the days when like Kenny Omega obviously was like, you know, on, on, you know, running on fumes, yeah. Kota Ibushi showing up, just not looking great and not performing great. Like MJF and, and Adam Cole just, you know, I mean, a lot of that stuff was entertaining, but like as soon as Adam Cole got injured, it was like, oh shit, what are you guys even going to do with this? All the devil yeah. stuff ended up being way too long. Um, yeah. After revolution, things changed a lot. Yeah. Well, even after World's End, things changed a lot. Sorry, World's End. Yeah, I meant, yeah, in the new year. Yeah. 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 yeah January 1st, things really changed. Um, let's see here. Uh, Floppy asks, what breakfast chain is superior between these three options? And one right. of them, dude, we don't have a lot of experience with it. Waffle he House? Says, yeah, Waffle House, IHOP, or Denny's. The well, legend of Waffle House is large, Larson. I don't think there's any Waffle Houses, uh, at least in Northern California, that I'm aware of. Yeah, the closest one is, I think, Southern California. All right. No, um, no. You know what? No. The closest one's like in Arizona. I remember I looked this up before. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And like a lot of places I used to go, I used to go to, back in our, our college days, my favorite hangover breakfast place was Caro's. Because mm-hmm, it yeah. was like a little step above IHOP. Yeah. They had really good biscuits and gravy, but I think Caro's is out of business now. Oh, wow, yeah. So I guess of the options listed, I don't have any experience with Waffle House, so I can't say that, even though its reputation precedes oh, itself. looms large. Indeed. So if the choice is between Denny's and IHOP, I'll, I'll go with Denny's, because I think the food's a little bit better. IHOP, though, does have more variety to the menu. Sure, sure. Oh boy. So yeah, I mean, got. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, we got to take Waffle House out of it. We're Californians. Um, at this point now, my kid pops it going to Denny's because I'm like, because she likes the, the they have like an Oreo shake there, uh-huh. and so I'm always like, hey, you wanna you wanna roll over to the to the Big D to Denny's, and uh, she's like, yeah, let's do it. So um, so yeah, it's 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 Denny's. There you go. Sizzling papaya. Says, uh, it seems like the crowd was nowhere near as behind Mercedes last night, speaking on Dynamite, yeah. as they were the week before. Do you think she's going to struggle finding that popularity that's worth the price in the sometimes struggling AEW women's division? Man, that's 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 a that's a question for Mercedes. Um, you know, part of her debut was in Boston, her hometown. Boston. When you're in your hometown, you're going to get the hometown pop. For sure. The hometown yeah. reception. That was her debut. Excitement was high. Um, uh, if they can keep her involved in interesting stories and she puts on really good matches, I think things will be, for the most part, all right. But in terms of how AEW's booked the women's division, that hasn't been a consistent thing. So Yeah, I feel like she's got to bring something unique to it. Yeah. And I don't know that coming out and saying, I'm Boston CEO every week is going to, is going to do it. She's you're, you're right. She's got to be involved in something interesting. But what could she do? You know, being involved in interesting stuff oftentimes is out of the hands of the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. She does have a writer there that basically was hired for her. Um, What could she do from a character perspective that, you know, like Tony Tony Storm completely reinvented her character. I'm not saying that's, that's the way to go for Mercedes, but like you can't just sort of coast on what you did in the past you got to yeah, try to like keep yourself fresh and relevant. I wonder what she's going to come up with mm-hmm. to to do that. Um, I mean, people like look, man. People still like Edge. They like Hope. You know, he's not the most compelling guy in the world because he hasn't really changed himself. He's getting by on the goodwill he has with the fan base and by seemingly being a fairly good natured individual. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, Which is relatable. Like I get that. But it's not mm-hmm. necessarily exciting. Yeah, yeah. And to get to that level where you're like, oh, man, people are really interested in seeing me. I feel like you need to, to bring a little bit more to it. So I don't know. She seems like a creative person. Mm-hmm. I really liked her her rebranding when she you know became Mercedes Monet. Yeah. Uh, first time she debuted outside of WWE. So I don't know. I don't know if she needs to just sort of freshen that up or, or if it is just going to be a matter of Hey, let's see where these matches takes her. Let's see if, you know, these yeah. stories are going to be interesting enough 
so that people are really interested in seeing her, you know? And maybe getting involved in an interesting story will spark an idea of a, mm-hmm. a new direction, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's still also early. You yeah, know? It's, it's yeah, also she's, early. she's, you know, two weeks removed from her debut, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, agent, Very we'll early. end on this one. Agent uh, Boy Band SLG says, does Mania still feel like the biggest show of the year? With so many premium live events taking place in huge stadiums, I don't feel that Mania is as special as it once was. I don't know, man. It still feels like it's right. It, this feels pretty big. The Rock's yeah. there. They're doing the Cody Roman stuff. This feels pretty big. It does. It does. I mean, it, there's been a lot of terrible WrestleManias. Mm-hmm. A lot of terrible WrestleManias. But the the cachet that the WrestleMania brand has mm-hmm. still elicits some measure of excitement. It does. Yeah, Because man. historically speaking, it's where some of the, the most memorable moments in WWE history have happened. Yeah, for sure, yeah. You know, that's that's what people talk about. One of the reasons probably a lot of people go to WWE is they want their mania moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. It's still, right. still the largest platform for, in the world of professional wrestling. It's yeah. WrestleMania. Absolutely. So, yeah. And this year they've done a good job of, uh, in a lot of respects, of building up the stories in advance of the show. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, for sure. Anyways, that's going to do it for the show because they are wrapping us up right now. They're doing the you whole... You just went from... They're giving me cues to they're wrapping us up, but it's effectively the same thing you're saying. Because the cue is to wrap it up. Jeez, That's what the man. cue is. You're just shooting hard on Steve today, aren't you? My goodness gracious. Wow. That was, there feel like, felt like there was some venom there. <laughs> and then you just look away. You ignore me responding to you. <laughs> Interpret that how you will. I may mean, some bulletin board. Uh, wait, sorry, dude. No, seriously. They are board. wrapping us up. They're wrapping us There's up. No, we got to get out. You're pointing to a wall there. We got to get out. <laughs> He's in the wall. <laughs> 